Oh, today is such a good day. Look what just arrived. I bought my dream bike on the internet. My 2003 dream bike. Ignore the label on the box. In the early 2000s, I just moved to Seattle to go to college, got really into cycling, and met a guy who ran a company called Unreal Cycles. Hey, look, I even did a logo for him. Anyway, the early 2000s was the early days of downhill mountain biking, and he specialized in urban free ride hardtails. People like me couldn't necessarily afford the full mean downhill rigs. Google Brooklyn Machine Works if you want to see what I'm talking about. I had my sights set on one of, well, what's in this box. I recently started reminiscing on those old times and thought about, ah, that one bike that I wanted, the one that got away. So I got online, started looking for people who'd been posting about them somewhat recently, but I found somebody who had posted about one recently, and it really caught my eye because it had some really unique parts. Now, these bikes were done as a custom build. This one specifically, this is someone else's custom build. I've got a box of parts here that we're going to be modifying it in the next video to get it to real dream bike status. This is going to be a journey into weirdness, so just in case you think this isn't freak bikey enough, it's going to get pretty freaky. There's plenty of interesting stuff in here that we may or may not be swapping out. We'll get to that in the next video. And this one, I'm just going to build the bike up as the original owner had it. Uh, we'll take a look see how they decided to build it. Some of you might be wondering, why are we in here instead of the shop? Well, it's because the shop's actually full of a bunch of other projects that I'm in the middle of. So um, yeah, we're gonna do it in here on this really hella rickety folding table. So we're gonna dive into it. I haven't seen it yet, I'm really excited. I only saw a couple of kind of hazy pictures. Uh, not a whole lot of detail when I ordered this, so yeah, some of it's going to be a mystery. There could be any number of really crazy things in this box, and I'm excited to find out what exactly we've got in here. Oh man. Okay, here we go. Cardboard, don't need that. Ooh, box of goodies. All right, first clue is a 20 mil through axle, uh, the OG of downhill. <laughs> Through axle systems. Not giving anything away yet. Uh, blown out saddle. Okay, well, that's pretty thrashed, but you know, to be expected. That's all right. I'll replace it with something else. And some rotors, or at least one rotor. All right, so the last thing in here, uh, we won't talk about it just yet. It's a little bit of a giveaway. We'll hang on to that. We'll come back to it. This is, this is really exciting. This is actually what caught my eye in the pictures is this wheel more specifically this hub look at this hub has anyone seen anything like this before i've never seen this before look at this this is crazy and then this rim this arrow racing rim which has one of the biggest weld seams i've ever seen um just way overbuilt that's exciting uh, i know a couple of bike nerd people are going to be pretty excited about a 24 inch arrow racing rim and if this is the initial indication, then the rest of this is going to be, uh, it's going to be really good. Well, everything else is bundled together. So let's just pull it all out as one. Oh man. F look at that. What a beast of a bike. Look at these tires. This is absurd. Okay. All right. Hang on. I got to get this out of the way. I guess start tearing all of this other stuff off. Um, little hints of, oh, three-piece cranks. Yep, all right, very interesting. So we got an aluminum frame and a couple of Hope levers, Thompson stem. Uh, let's see what kind of grips we have. Ah, some intense racing grips. All right, that's classic. Yeah, all right. And for the big reveal, yeah, there you go. 24 cycles, Latoy 3. How crazy is this? The 
effectively all of the bikes from this time period in the whole downhill uh, free ride scene were custom builds. You had crazy frame manufacturers doing different unique things and coupling those with really weird parts components. I mean, all of this is like pre Red Bull Rampage era stuff and everybody was just going huge and hucking to flat and dropping the biggest drops. Uh, if you know Josh Bender, then you, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, do yourself a solid and look him up. This was a French company. They had a couple different frames, really quirky bunch. Uh, the Le Toy, the Le Dude, the Porn King. I didn't name any of this stuff, but you know, it was fitting at the time. Everything way overbuilt. Tired of breaking frame after frame and a handful of people started over engineering everything. So I did a little bit of research on these hubs. I still don't know a whole lot. They were made by a company called Seismic, I think maybe out of California. This is a six inch hub. I've heard rumors, I haven't been able to see any pictures that they did an eight or 10 inch version. It just really has those vibes of replicating or emulating what was happening in motocross at the time. Stuff that people knew could go big and could take big impacts. So I did seek out a couple of other parts in anticipation for this. I got some sort of period correct azonic pedals, uh, but to be honest, I'm not trying to make this a, a restoration period specific build. Um, a lot of it's just going from my memory and trying to think of what I remember the dream bike looking like, how I wanted it to be. Some of it's just parts that I can find and get my hands on. This rigid 24 inch fork definitely fits the vibe. Uh, I don't know that it's the fork that I'm going to keep, but again, I just want to get this built up the way that, that I purchased it, see how everything works, see if there's anything that needs adjustment or if I need to replace anything and go from there. So this bike comes with some actually really cool Hope disc brakes, um, really beautifully machined. The front one's really cool this, the, with this pink anodizing, um, which is actually really neat. And there's some really fine... Uh, etching that's done on it. Um, I guess it was kind of a cool uh, anniversary edition um, that they did of this particular break. Hope stuff is just really cool. I've never owned it before. I haven't played with it too much. Uh, I dig that this has got a little dial and reach adjust, which is pretty sweet. Uh, of course, I've got the matching rear hub. Uh, all the shifting actually seems to work pretty well, which is which is surprising, which is pretty sweet. Uh, the tire clearance is, is tight on these stays. So some of you might be wondering what these weird holes are on the seat stays. Well, that's kind of where that last weird part that was in the box comes in. This was in an era where people were still in between disc brakes and rim brakes. And a lot of people had hydraulic rim brakes for trials type riding. They have this adjustable brake bridge because this frame was actually designed to be 24 inch or 26 inch. So depending on where the rear axle is and the dropouts and what size rim you're running, you can dial in this adjustable brake arch for having rim brakes if you wanted. Got it mostly together. Let's just get it outside where we can kind of take a look at all of it, take it all in. Uh, if I can find a seat here in a bit, I might try and take it for a test ride, but... Uh, in the meantime, just enjoy the glory of this 24 Cycles Latoy 3. It's just really cool to see this super weird niche part of cycling history. There's something to it. Like, this existed. This was something that influenced things that came later even if they threw it all out the window like people were doing this really nutso stuff i don't think that it replaces or even competes with anything on a modern level like the whole thing is a boat anchor it weighs a ton i heard rumors of the early days late 90s people taking regular aluminum frames and trying to slap motorcycle suspension forks on them because they just needed the most amount of travel the most amount of shock absorption and so there were these boutique builders who were just making crazy heavy duty bikes just like this anyway i'll i'll see if i can take it on a test ride in a bit uh i'm excited to get right to the next video we're gonna get this modified 
going to turn it into my vision. Uh, I'm excited. Thanks for watching. See you next video.